Okay, back to the basic stuff that everyone has done at this point. I know, I know, trust me, I got something cooking that's a little bit more interesting. It's a video that'll be probably about an hour and a half long. It's 35 minutes right now. I got 35 minutes done. And it's only a third the way done, so that's about a guesstimate. That video will be coming out in July. But I'm going to put this out in the meantime, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Back in April, I put out a poll asking you guys what you would like to see for the June video. There were five options. Of those five options, this video and another video, which will likely come out in a few months or so, ended up tying. I flipped a coin, and this was the video that came out victorious. Everyone in the TF2 sphere has done a new weapon idea video. It's hard to find a YouTuber that hasn't. What I'm going to do is rather than giving new weapon ideas, just single new weapon ideas, I'm going to give new weapon set ideas. Now, weapon sets are kind of a thing of the past, but I might as well dip my hand into the cobweb filled cookie jar and take a crack at it. Also, something interesting about this specific video is that all these sets happen to revolve around dexterity, agility, and speed in some way or another. You'll see what I mean once we get into it. I am going to go over a total of 9 weapons for 3 classes, trying to make weapons that overall synergize with each other. I'm not going to waste your time any longer, let's jump into the abyss, shall we? The first set is a sniper set, which I have not named yet, but maybe I will by the time the video actually comes out, I'm not sure. Though I will tell you the point of the set first, then I'll follow up with why I came up with it, what the whole plan and what the whole idea behind it was, and what it was supposed to do. The set is supposed to open new doors for combo snipers. Yeah, I know you've been waiting for this. The set will benefit those who are aggressive and like to get up close in the action. Huntsman is always an option, but these three weapons were made for each other. Why did I come up with this? Well, because I hate snipers, but more precisely, I hate snipers who sit in the back of the map, head glitching with dark colors and take pot shots at the team from a safe distance when they know you can't really do anything about it. Pot shot. Hmm. Well, that just happens to be the name of my first weapon in the set, the pot shot. The pot shot is a level 44 sniper replacement that aids those who prefer much more up close and personal engagements, getting their hands dirty for once. Let's go over the stats of this thing. And as I go over each stat, I will give the reasoning behind the stat's existence in the first place. I think it's only fair to start with the upsides. What is the reason that you should even be using this rifle over stock or any other alternatives? I will briefly go over the stats, but dive into the design choices after listing the stats. The one listed at the very top is the ability to headshot independent from your scope. Now I know this sounds powerful as hell, I know, however it will make a lot more sense once we get into the nitty gritty and if you've read ahead you can probably already see why it has this stat in the first place. The pot shot also comes with the insane upside of a 100% faster firing speed. Now the thing is TF2 is kind of weird with percentages so uh, I may have stated it incorrectly but the intended firing speed is supposed to be double that of the stock sniper rifle so instead of taking 1.5 seconds in between shots it will take 3 fourths of a second or 0 0.75 seconds. It also comes equipped with a 30% headshot damage bonus on top of the headshot itself and a 20% holster speed that will suit well with other weapons in the set. The downside to this rifle on steroids is the fact that it only mini grits on headshot. It cannot scope in which means that you have no way to actually charge your shot and it suffers from damage fall off but has no sort of damage ramp up, having an average damage from close to medium range before falling off at much longer ranges. Okay, so what was the actual design philosophy? What was going through my head while making this? Well, first, a lot of caffeine and maybe some other substances, but I'm not going to go too in depth on that. The headshot independent from the scope, like I stated, would be a stat that would make sense later, as this thing can't scope in in the first place. So that stat was just there for a little bit of reassurance. The firing speed bonus is there to make the weapon a little more of a pressure and assault type weapon. Faster firing, but lower overall damage. The 30% damage bonus was initially planned to be a flat 30% damage bonus, so regardless if you hit a headshot or not. However, I was thinking about it, I was sitting here, and I thought it would be better if it rewarded headshots. We shouldn't really reward body shots as much, so I think the 30% damage bonus on headshots would be a little more appreciated and would actually reward snipers for hitting their shots. So technically the base damage of a headshot is 65 rather than 50. So if you don't know how headshots work, basically it's just a body shot damage with a crit on top. So now the base damage is 65, then you put a mini crit on top of that, allowing the headshot to deal a maximum of about 88 damage when rounded up. Why 88? 
Well, because 88 still allows you to actually potentially two-shot Pyros and Demo Men who aren't using the booties or don't have the Eyelander, for example. If you manage to hit two shots back to back, because it will deal 176 damage, just over those two classes' base health of 175, potentially having a quicker time to kill on said classes, assuming you're you know already firing at other enemies. It's, it's kind of weird how I worded it, but what I mean is that it could potentially kill quicker because of the attack interval being faster than the stock sniper rifle. And to finally cap off the upsides, the whole point of the weapon was to be comboed with your SMG. Whether that's the stock SMG, the cleaner's carbine, or the SMG we'll get into later. You hit them with a pot shot, hence the name, then quickly switch to whatever weapon, whatever secondary you are running, to quickly finish them off. Similar to how with a regular sniper rifle, when someone's up close in your face, you'd hit them with the body shot, and then try to finish them off with your SMG. This would make the weapon the best sniper weapon for close range playstyles. This was actually proven by the downsides. The weapon only mini crits, so the potential damage output is much weaker. And this weapon is incapable of charging, which means you can't charge it up and potentially do over 200 damage on a headshot, meaning you can one shot soldiers and demo men and whatnot. You have to hit multiple successive shots, but the fire rate is faster, meaning if you don't hit your shots, it, well, it just gives you a little more leeway, gives you a little bit more room and margin for error. That was the word I was looking for, excuse me. And you have to be much closer in order to hit those successive shots. This also comes into play with the fact that you can't zoom in. You can't zoom in on players at greater distances, meaning to be more consistent, you have to be much closer to your target. It was kind of like if you tried to use the old ambassador from a long range. Yes, you could potentially get those 102 headshots from a mile away on the other side of the 2-4 battlements or on high tower or whatever, but it wasn't very reliable. It was more of a gimmick playstyle, and you're better being up close and actually trying to make full utilization of that headshot because you have a better chance of actually hitting the headshot. And finally, the weapon does actually have damage fall off, but doesn't have damage ramp up. The only reason I didn't add a damage ramp up was because I wanted this thing to be effective at mid range. And also I was kind of lazy getting with the damage numbers. However, this thing does have damage fall off. Meaning if you try to shoot someone at a long range and you don't manage to get a headshot, which will only deal 88 damage by the way, and a regular sniper rifle will do much better at actually hitting people from farther so you don't have to worry. But if you hit a body shot, it's only going to do 26 damage, which isn't negligible. It can potentially five shot scouts, spies, snipers, whatever. However, 26 damage isn't a whole lot, and a regular sniper will be better at longer ranges. So this weapon is meant more for close range combat, allowing you to get more shots off quickly and combo it with your submachine gun. This weapon really incentivizes close to mid-range encounters and getting your ass face to face with the enemy. Rewarding combos, game sense, staying cool under pressure since you can't do this from across the map, behind your team, in the corner, and also you reliably hit successive hit shots. So now that we discussed the paw shots and why the stats even exist, let's move on to the secondary weapon that accompanies it, really bringing out the strengths of the paw shot. The paw shot could work on its own, but this is a weapon set video. What weapon goes with it? So, we went pretty in-depth for the primary. The primary is pretty good no matter what secondary you decide to run with it. But this next weapon is the one that was a match made in heaven. The Queensland Quick Draw. Originally called the Quick Draw, but I added the Queensland on top of it because it sounded extra Australian. The Quick Draw's first bonus is that it has no damage fall off, meaning it does base damage at every range. This sounds like it'd be partially problematic. Or maybe not, it's the SMG replacement, but you'll see what we're cooking in just a second. For the stat that gives it its name is the 25% extra draw speed bonus, which when paired with the pot shot and its faster holster speed makes this a very easy combo weapon. The last upside is a flat 25% damage bonus. Holy crap, that's insane! And then you realize the base damage of the SMG is 8, and then it doesn't sound all that crazy anymore, bringing the base damage from a measly version 8 to a Chad 10. The downsides, however, are as follows. There is no damage ramp up, so no damage ramp up, no damage fall off. So the damage bonus and no fall off are balanced out by the fact that this thing does potentially less damage when you're touching noses, but if you back up, then the Queensland Quick Draw can out damage the Sock SMG and very easily out damage the Cleaner's Carbine. It also comes with a 50% magazine reduction, bringing the capacity down to just 12 from 25, meaning all 12 nails can deal up to 120 damage. Yeah, you might be listening there. 
which if you use the paw shot or any other sniper rifle to soften them up, will be enough to do good work, especially with the paw shot or huntsman because those things can headshot without having to scope in. The last change was that instead of using bullets, you probably heard me, it shoots nails, having the same projectile speed as a grenade from the Demo Man, or just over 1200 hammer units. And those are the stats. While this one's a little more straightforward, let's break it down piece by piece and dissect this thing like you're back in biology class. The no damage follow off a ramp upper to kind of make it distinguished from the other two SMG options. It will be effective up close and at range assuming you can aim. If you can aim, it will be rewarded greatly. The damage bonus is also straightforward because 8 is lackluster. Not that 10 is much better, but we're talking about a 25% increase here, and when dealing with small numbers of any sort, a little tiny bump like this can be pretty significant. The draw speed bonus should be obvious for clicker deploy after hitting an enemy. However, even if you used it outside of its set, it could be pretty beneficial. If a scout or roaming soldier slash demo man was to waltz up to you, you would be able to retaliate much quicker than if you had any other secondary, especially compared to the other sniper shields and backpack items. And Girati, while at the same time requiring the sniper to be somewhat good at tracking in order to make sure those shots actually land and utilize it to its full potential. So there's a little bit of a risk reward here. The magazine capacity reduction from 25 to 12 was only to make sure this weapon was being used as intended. The weapon is more for finishing an enemy off. While it can kill, it is much more time efficient to shoot them for 50 again, then finish them off with a stream of nails, which can be done with any SMG but assuming you can aim, this will dispatch them much quicker, especially if you're at more of a mid-range, which most of the time you are because you're not going to be touching tips with them 99% of the time. Overall, I think this will be just a better weapon for that hitting them with one punch, uh, I guess the one, two punch, but rather like one punch and about five to 10 quick jabs in about a second. But yeah, that's it for the Queensland quick draw. That's it for the secondary. Let's finish this and move on to the melee weapon. Now, this melee weapon has gone through a couple of iterations. I kind of went through a couple of different ideas for what I wanted to do, though I finally decided on one that I felt was not too overpowered, but was still useful for up-close engagements. With the last two weapons listed, your best range is mid-range, being more mid-long with the pot shot and being more mid-close with the quick draw, but still overall mid-range. You're going to suffer if the enemy is directly in front of you. What can you do? Well, you can hope to create distance by surfing damage, but that requires you to take damage and isn't all that reliable except with stuff like rockets. But fret not, this sniping stick is here. The sniping stick is a sniper melee that forces mid-range battles without being too overbearing. The major upside of this weapon is the fact that it pushes enemies back. The pushback is similar to that of the shortstop shove and doesn't affect air control of the enemy too much, so it doesn't stun lock them. It is also a tool that can help create distance between you and your enemy. The other upside the baton it comes equipped with is a 25% faster deploy speed, because of course it does, it just matches the set. But it will make more sense later, we'll get into the nitty gritty of all that. And then it comes with the downside of you taking extra push force from damage and air blast, that being the same as the short stop once again, as of 2024, being 20% and also having a 20% swing speed penalty. The design for this weapon is simple, keep them away from you, the increased knockback of the weapon will push enemies far enough for you to either pull out your SMG or pull out the pot shot and get a quick pot shot off. This weapon also has a draw speed bonus, meaning you'll be able to quickly deploy and dispatch of enemies. It also has no damage penalty, allowing you to get that first swing off a little bit quicker than your enemy would. However, it is balanced out by the fact that you take more push force from enemies, damage or air blast. It is the same as the shortstop 20%, like I said, enough to throw off your aim or could possibly make it easier for you to get juggled and have them keep you at a distance. So you keep them at a distance, but they can kind of also keep you at a distance. And this is active at all time. I originally planned for it to be only when the weapon is active. However, I feel like since it's a melee weapon, it won't be out much and it's not enough of a downside otherwise. So use it at your own discretion. However, if you're using the Paw Shot or Huntsman, this will be less detrimental as you'll be closer and precision is slightly less important. It still is, but there's a lot less distance between you and your foe on the average, meaning you can line up your shots a lot easier. It's going to be a little more detrimental if you're playing standard sniper, but if you're playing with the weapons it's intended to be played with, it'll be pretty good. The final downside is just the 20% swing speed penalty, just so this thing has a slight downside compared to stock for when you're not using it with the paw shot or huntsman. Though I guess you could say the increased knockback also somewhat acts as a downside as it requires a follow-up shot and they'll be out of effective range. Either way, it's a good distance tool maker. That was the whole point of it. And yeah. 
That's it for this set. The main priority is speed and effectiveness, allowing the sniper to be more effective in mid-range battles, allowing for an aggressive and even a combo style playstyle for sniper. Now we talked enough about sniper, let's move on to the big man himself, heavy weapons guy. He needs some speed. Ask anyone who's played TF2 for a long time what they believe is the most boring class, and there's a 99% chance they'll say Heavy. Except for the four current Heavy mains in existence that just got mad at that statement. Heavy may be the poster child of TF2, made in Gabe Newell's image, but he isn't very liked. Why is that? Well, it's pretty simple. Heavy is really slow. And yeah, that's the point. But believe it or not, a game with Scout, Rocket Jumping, Sticky Jumping, Sentry Jumping, Flare Jumping, and other crazy movement tech a class that is slow and cumbersome, a tank class, isn't all that fun to play for the vast majority of people. Sure, that is the point of Heavy, that's what Heavy's supposed to do, but unlike some classes, there aren't really any weapons to shake up the formula. There's the Gru and the Eviction Notice that kind of do, because you can move a little bit faster, and there's the Tommy Slav, which revs faster and can allow you to be a little more aggressive. Yes, there are slight differences, but Heavy overall is very one note. So that's what we're going to try to solve. Kind of. Now, these won't be game-changing, I'm going to admit, but I think it will make Heavy a bit more fun to play, or make him a little more fast-paced, kind of changing up the play style just a tiny bit. You'll see what we mean. Let's get into this. Our first weapon up is the Soviet Suppressor. This weapon is modeled after the PPSH-41, a Soviet submachine gun commonly used in World War II. I'm sure you've all seen it at this point, it's pretty iconic. This version of the Soviet Suppressor has four upsides balanced out by two downsides. Before we get into what these downsides really are supposed to do, let's actually talk about them and what they are. This weapon does not need to be unrevved in order to swap weapons. Whoa, that's different, but let's let's keep reading. There's a 40% speed bonus while you are spun up. I have to clarify this because I've had to clarify it a hundred times in the past. This is compared to his base movement speed while spun up. So instead of moving at 110 hammer units while spun up, he'll move at 154 hammer units. As for some reason, some people just interpreted this as it means he would move faster compared to his base 240% movement speed, like he moved faster when he was spun up. No, it's compared to his revved up speed. So he just moves a little bit faster than he normally would. Okay? Glad we got that out of the way. And the last two upsides are a no barrel spin sound similar to the Tommy Slob and a two second speed boost upon successive kill. The downsides are a 25% damage penalty and a 10% accuracy penalty. Okay, that's a lot, but what was I thinking? What is the design philosophy of this weapon? Well, this minigun is meant to be a weapon that makes it easier to keep enemies at bay with suppressive fire, hence the name, Soviet Suppressor. You are able to move 40% faster so you can more easily dodge incoming attacks compared to normal, and you can just move around the map a little bit faster while spun up, which is always nice. And if you don't think so, think about comparing the Brass Beast, for example, to the minigun. That extra movement speed does make a difference, 100%. You also receive a 2 second speed boost upon kill, which allows you to close the gap more effectively, assuming you can chain kills together. However, it's balanced out by the fact that this thing has a damage penalty, 25%, the same as the Natasha, so you can kind of just keep that in your mind, like if you were using the Natasha, but you don't slow enemies down. And it forces you to move forward towards your enemy, making full use of it. And of course, the accuracy penalty is just to make sure you have to be a little bit closer to your enemy, having a risk-reward factor to it. If you can chain kills, you'll be better off using this thing compared to stock or any of the other options. Now for the heavy-sized elephant in the room, the one upside I have not talked about yet. The fact that this weapon does not need to be unrevved in order to switch weapons. Huh? What, what does that do? Well, first I'll explain what it is. Basically, normally you have to unrev your minigun in order to switch to your shotgun or to your sandwich. However, with this stat, you don't have to do that. You can simply just switch whenever. It still takes 0.5 seconds, you just don't have to wait for the animation to be over. But okay, why does this exist? Well, I don't know if you've noticed. I don't know if I'm the only one that's noticed. It might be news to you, I don't know. But it seems that more heavies pack lunch than pack heat nowadays. The shotguns are a rare sight for normal heavy, only relegated to the stupid bat scout playstyle. This is mostly due to the fact that switching off the minigun takes forever, so it's hard to make use of it, and of course the sandwich and second banana's existence, it's just, they're just so good. Though, believe it or not, heavy shotguns are actually pretty good if used correctly. The few times I do play heavy, I always run the shotgun. Not an MVM, but 
in casual, the shotgun actually can be a great tool. Back in the day when Heavy revved up 25% slower than he does now, roaming around with the shotgun was safer as it meant you could deal more damage to anyone that caught you off guard. The shotgun is a great workhorse weapon, especially on Engineer and even Pyro and Soldier, but it's the exact same on Heavy, it's the exact same shotgun. However, when they increased the speed in which Heavy spins up, the shotgun was seen as less useful, because you could kind of react fast enough, so you didn't really need to have it out to do quick damage. I can't help but agree that the sandwich and its counterparts are integral to Heavy's kit, but I think they're wrong about the shotgun. The amount of times I dispatched of enemies before they could do anything when I wasn't pre-revved is uncountable. And being able to jump and move around and actually be a mobile target, dealing high burst damage with 300 health is actually really strong. Because sometimes maybe there's a pesky scout, well, if you're just sitting there with your minigun revved up, the scout can just jump around you and you're an easy target. However, if you jump around them, you get them to miss a lot more often, believe it or not. Yes, you're still a big target, but it's a lot harder to hit you when you're kind of moving a lot. Yeah, you could crouch up and down, but that's just vertical movement. Having some horizontal movement changes everything. And to reel everything back in, this weapon encourages the use of the shotgun so you can more easily take it out to finish enemies off. While that was the intended use case for this, you can still use the sandwich, for example, much quicker as well. So this works with really any of Heavy's secondaries. This makes you quicker, more seamless to move between weapons as you don't have to wait for the long unrev time, and a lot more. So we've discussed the primary, it's time to go on to the secondary, which I think you will like. I just went on a rant about how I love heavy shotguns. Well, prepare yourself. Here's my next idea. The Russian Borehole Maker, a new shotgun unlocked for heavy and potentially other classes, but just heavy for now. Plus, it would be kind of redundant for the most part on Soldier and Pyro, but whatever, I'm getting off track. The Russian Borehole Maker. What does it do? Well, it only has one listed upside. That being, just like the Force of Nature, it knocks both you and the enemy backwards. Though it's much more tame, being more akin to the original Force of Nature, where it was like Air Blast, or just a little bit less than the Shortstop Shove, maybe around the Shortstop Shove. So not too strong, but you know, it definitely pushes both you and the enemy backwards. That is it for its listed upsides. It's the only listed upside. The downsides, however, include a 34% two magazine size reduction from six to four and a 20% firing speed penalty, taking the attack interval from 0.625 seconds to three quarters of a second, 0.75 seconds, which is small, but very noticeable when you are taking multiple shots. The unlisted downsides and upsides come in the operation of the weapon. It works similar to the Pompson, but done right. Having identical damage values, but with a projectile speed of 3,000 hammer units, unlike the Pompson's 1,200. Ugh. Or about the same as the Raptor Assassin's Bauble, Sandman Ball, Flying Guillotine, and Man Melter Flare. There might be another one I'm forgetting, but these are the four that I have listed here. This means that it does 72 damage up close, 60 base, and 32 at longer ranges. The weapon's knockback is only applied when dealing at least 60 damage, base damage, or about mid-range, similar to how the Force of Nature's knockback is only applied when you're within close proximity. Though this one has a little bit more leeway because instead of firing multiple pellets, it fires a slug. So it's just one big projectile. Basically, this weapon is intended to be a hybrid Pompson and detonator weapon for heavy, allowing him to get pseudo double jumps and clear some railings he may not have otherwise. The jump will be small and not like a rocket jump, like I said, more like a detonator jump but it will be enough for him to reach some spots he would have not been able to otherwise, so you can flank from unexpected areas as heavy, where any other secondary, primary, whatever, is not going to allow you to do. The 20% slower attack speed and magazine reduction are pretty self-explanatory. It makes this weapon far more slow and cumbersome, which I think balances out the upsides of this thing being a potential distance maker. The other design philosophy was to make this a ranged weapon for heavy. Heavy has no ranged weapons at all. Every class besides the Heavy has some option or another for range. Well, except, I guess, the Scout and kind of the Spy. Scout has the shortstop. Spy's revolvers are still decent. I mean, there's the Ambassador, but, you know, Jungle Inferno. But still, Soldier has rockets, and technically the Bison, but I don't really count that. Pyro has flares. Demoman can charge his stickies, and plus the grenades still have pretty good distance. Engineer has the Pompson, Rescue Ranger, and Wrangler. And I know the Pompson isn't that good, but still technically does better damage at long range, assuming the enemy doesn't dodge the slow-ass projectile. Sniper is... Sniper. I mean, that's his whole job. To annoy the team from far away. Medic has the crossbow. So, 
every single class has some sort of mid-range option or another. Just not heavy. Heavy has nothing. So this will offer him a long-ranged assault capability. But realize it will do like 32 damage. It is something, but it's not going to be overbearing or game-breaking. Overall, I think this is a great weapon for a faster-paced heavy playstyle, fitting right in with the other heavy weapons in this kit. This was short, but now we'll move on to the last weapon of this set. The melee weapon. I had a hard time with this one, I'm going to be completely honest. But I decided to go another route that I don't think I've seen much anywhere else. I present to you the Heavy Commitment. This weapon is going to ruffle some feathers or garner some looks, but I don't care. I wanted to try something a little bit different. It is a weapon that, despite being a melee, is a complete game changer. Well, okay, it shifts how heavy plays a little bit. I made it sound better than it probably is. It would be a bit different compared to normal. Here we go. The Heavy Commitment is visible in the Heavy's hands at all times. This will make sense later. I just think it's an important stat that it should have. The melee has three upsides and one downside that are always active. Ooh, scary. This weapon, like I said, is a partial conversion. First bonus. Ooh, okay. Prepare yourself. A 10% movement speed buff, bringing the base speed from 77% to 87%, or 5% slower than the Demo Man. If you want a reference for how fast this is, equip the booties, shield, and Scotsman's Gold Cutter on Demo Man, and you'll have your reference, as that is exactly how fast you will move with all these items equipped and how fast Heavy will move with the gloves equipped. This is active at all times, so it does not need to be out. You always move 10% faster, which is why I want the weapon to be visible at all times, so a player looking at you will be able to know that this Heavy has these buffs and these debuffs. The next one is a 30% switch speed bonus. Oh my god, that's insane. This is too much, I can't watch. But it will make a lot more sense later. Then to cap it off, a 25% reload speed bonus or a 25% faster charge speed for your secondaries. So you'll reload 25% faster or you'll get about 9, 8, 8 to 9 seconds off sandwich. I didn't do the math, but I'm not good at quick math, whatever. These buffs are crazy. What could balance this out? What could possibly balance this crazy set of upsides out? Well, the downside is a flat... 50 max health penalty on wear, bringing the Heavy's base health from 300 to 250. Now the name makes sense, doesn't it? The Heavy Commitment. It makes a lot more sense. Okay. This weapon is a partial conversion, taking him from the Heavy Gunner type class to more of a middle ground commando light gunner type class. You move a bit faster, which can also work with the Soviet Suppressor to make you even faster while you're spun up. You have a faster swap speed, allowing you to be more reactionary compared to normal, which also works with the Soviet Suppressor. If you're trying to go from your Soviet Suppressor, your minigun, your submachine gun, whatever you want to call it, to your shotgun. And finally, a 25% faster reload time for your shotgun or a nice 25% faster recharge on your lunchbox items. This makes you more mobile, allows you to get back and engage enemies much quicker. However, you are a bit squishier, as 50 less health comes into play in many fights. While I can't think of any major thresholds at this cross off the top of my head, it is still 50 less health. May not seem big, but it is enough to balance this weapon out. I also thought of making it 60 less health, but I'm not completely sure, so I'm going to go with 50. This, in my opinion, was the most experimental one out of the bunch, and I would love to hear from you guys and what you think about all this. Though with that, we wrap the heavy segment, a more aggressive, mobile version of heavy that can lay down the law and suppress enemies. You can also come from places you didn't expect. Now, let's get on to our last set of the video for the Engineer. Yeehaw. Engineer has grown on me over the years. I used to not like playing as him, but over time, I have enjoyed providing dispensers and teleporters for my team, blocking off certain areas of sentries, and a lot more. He does have a lot to offer. This idea is a bit different compared to the other two set ideas. It will still be focused around speed and agility, but a slightly different approach overall. This time there's actually a theme. That theme being an 1800s Western gunslinger theme. It won't be too over the top, but it's what I was going for. Our first weapon, which I haven't seen done in many games, is the One-Eyed Ranger. The One-Eyed Ranger is a break action shotgun for the engineer. This weapon has multiple nice bonuses, including a 40% accuracy bonus. 
Now this could be a detriment for some who don't have steady hands, but assuming you can aim, this will be a definite bonus as you can hit more pellets out of further range due to the tighter spread. Now for this next stat, is it's an interesting one. At first, the reload speed will be the same as the stock shotgun for engineers, taking 0.87 seconds. And if you didn't know, engineer and heavy happen to reload the fastest, while pyro and soldier reload a little bit slower. So this is based off the engineer's reload speed, not those two. A little fun fact, but let's move on. For each successive shot that you hit that does at least 40 damage, the reload speed is increased by 15%, maxing out at 45%, which will take that 0.87 seconds time down to just 0.48 seconds, which is significantly faster than the stock shotgun. If you miss or deal less than 40 damage, it will be reset. The downsides, however, are interesting, being an 87% reduction to how many shells you can shove into the weapon. Whoa, bringing that six down to just one whole shell. And a 10% less pellet per shot penalty, bringing the pellet count down from 10 to just 9. This weapon has one listed upside with two downsides and a goofy mechanic. Okay, so what's the meaning behind this? Well, this boomstick is not just a regular double barrel, but rather a single barrel shotgun, which is why it's called the One-Eyed Ranger. Get it? Because it has one barrel? Clever, I know. This shotgun only holds one single round and has gone through many iterations. The one I decided on is one that rewards engineers for protecting their base and hitting successive shots. The 40% accuracy bonus is to allow you to hit those at a greater distance, and if you can actually aim well, make it easier to hit that 40 damage threshold. I was thinking of lowering that threshold maybe to 30, but I'll leave it for now, and you guys can tell me what you think down in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. This weapon can allow you to lay down the law, similar to how the Widowmaker works, though I think that it differentiates itself just enough to be its own weapon. And technically it also has a damage penalty, maxing out at 81, and using normal shells, but mm, it still does normal damage per pellet, there's just one less pellet. The single barrel design came to me because I had this shotgun idea, or something similar, for another game. But... Just imagine, you know, you start hitting your shots and NG just frantically loads new shells into the barrel in a fraction of a second and you're just spamming it, bam, 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 hit your shots. I think it'd be pretty fun. My original idea for the western theme was to include a boring old double barrel shotgun, however I was thinking that this would be different. So it was either single barrel or quad barrel, that was where the two ideas I came up with. And they do exist, by the way, both of those do exist, but I decided to go with the single barrel as I thought it was much more of a rarity in gaming and it would be pretty neat. So to recap, longer ranged, faster firing, keeping the pressure on. And probably a lot better for battle engineers compared to standard engineer, but you could still use it for either. And speaking of pressure, let's discuss the secondary that rides along with the One-Eyed Ranger. The Slamfire, a new revolver for engineer. Finally, a Texas-style six-shooter. Now, I know the name is kind of weird it doesn't really make sense if you know what slam firing is then you know that the name is kind of odd if you don't know what slam firing is basically slam firing is when you use typically you use a shotgun at least that's the only way i know of it and you hold down the trigger rack it back and you violently strike it forward so the firing pin slams up against the shell with enough force to set it off i've personally never done this with any shotgun i've shot and most shotguns i don't think are made for it but it is something that you can do however you notice i was talking about shotgun this is a this is a pistol just pretend that it has something to do with slamming the hammer or like fanning someone. Maybe it should be called the fan or something. Its original name was the Quick Draw, but I decided to give that to the Sniper Secondary. I, I don't know, whatever, let's move on. This weapon is very simple. It comes with a 15% damage bonus like the Winger and a 30% draw speed bonus, which you can probably see, that's why I wanted to call it the Quick Draw, but whatever, we got the slam fire. The only downside is a 50% reduction in cylinder size, I guess you could say. Holding 6 like any good 6 shooter rather than the standard 12 of the stock pistol. My idea was pretty simple. It was supposed to be the Winger's original design but done right. If you don't know, the Winger didn't release with the 25% jump height bonus. The damage bonus and the magazine reduction were supposed to make it kind of a finisher tool. But it just, it sucked. It didn't do its job very well. This one has a draw speed bonus on top so it kind of incentivizes you actually using it as a finish tool after maybe fighting someone who was near your sentry and they're running away so you kind of 
get a couple shots off, whatever the reason it might be. Maybe you ran out of ammo in your shotgun, you know? The weapon that it comes with only has one shell, so maybe you can kind of hit him with that one shell and then finish him off real quickly. I don't know how you want to use this. But it also comes with six rounds instead of five, so you get one extra bullet to work with. There's not much to say about the slam fire. It's just a simple engineer secondary that would work well with mostly battle engineer playstyles, which is primarily what the primary also promotes. But you can use it at any time. It's just a great finisher tool. Now, to end this video off, we're going to move on to the final weapon. Engineer's new melee weapon. I introduce to you the Hot Tail Texan. Another wrench that has gone through a plethora of iteration, but I finally decided on a design that I thought was somewhat good power balance. Good upsides, but also adequate downsides. I pitched this idea before and have gotten mixed reception, so let's see what you guys think. Here are the main stats. The Engineer gains a 4 second speed boost after exiting the teleporter and a 2 second speed boost after building construction or building destruction. Whether your dispenser goes down or you just put up a new one. This does not stack, the cap is 4, so it's not like you can go through an exit, have multiple buildings go down and nearly get 10 seconds of speed boost. The max is 4 seconds and the timer is simply reset or increased by X amount if it wouldn't have reached 4. You can't go above 4 seconds. It also comes with the stat of a no movement speed penalty while you're hauling, allowing you to move at 100% while carrying buildings, instead of the normal 90%, or just a bit slower than Demo Man. The downsides, however, include a 50 max metal reserve penalty on wear, bringing it down from 200 to 150, and a small 15% swing speed penalty. The idea for this wrench was to be a rollout and setup weapon. You move faster after exiting a teleporter. It was intended to be 2 seconds, but I upped it to 4 through further consideration. Getting the speed boost after exiting a teleporter can allow you to get to the front lines quicker and potentially save buildings or put up new ones before any other engineer could. In addition, the extra speed boost from placing the buildings allows you to quickly move to another spot to set up another building. But it's only two seconds. It's just a small buff to make it a bit easier and a bit faster to getting to the next location, but not enough to really screw up any regular gunfights. The movement speed bonus for buildings destroyed is also pretty simple. It's enough for you to get to cover and out of the firefight. Or if you're a maniac, go in for one last kill, bridging that distance a bit easier. But you're still an engineer. You know, you have 125 health. Don't try it. The no hauling movement speed penalty is also pretty self-explanatory, being all about speed and getting to the next spot. So you don't move at 90%, you move at the full 100%, which does make things a little bit easier when you need to move that gear up. The main downside is the fact that you carry less reserve metal, which has indirect effects on both the short circuit and Widowmaker, but more importantly, this small reserve penalty doesn't allow you to upgrade buildings as effectively or keep them alive as much unless you have a dispenser right near you. Meaning, if you don't have a dispenser right next to you, you have to make multiple trips to get ammo packs. The 15% swing speed penalty also makes it harder to keep buildings up and deal with foes, which I feel is a good trade-off. You deal less damage per minute, heal slower, but you can also get back to the fight much quicker in return. I've also played around with the idea of a max health penalty instead of a reserve penalty, similar to the Sandman, but I think that might be a bit too harsh, I'm not 100% sure, or a 20% damage vulnerability while hauling buildings similar to the Rescue Rangers downside, where you're marked for death. I have really enjoyed making this weapon, but balancing it has been a bit of a back and forth. I should mention that I have no way to test these weapons, I don't know how good they would actually be, I don't know how they would interact with the TF2 world. Maybe they turn out great and it becomes a mainstay or like a nice little side grade, or maybe we get the old caver situation, which is intended to be a last resort tool, but kind of turn into a bombing medics tool. So I'm not 100% sure, but that right there was our last weapon, the Hot Tail Texan. And that will do it. That was the last weapon in the video. Tell me what you guys think down below. Were these good ideas? Some of them? None of them? Did you like any of the concept but thought the execution was bad? Let me know down below as I love to hear from you guys. Whether overall positive or negative, leave a comment giving your opinion or even your own ideas for weapons you would like. Up to you. Anyway, that's going to do it. I got a long video cooking for July. I will see you then. Bye.